for this work. Okay, this morning, this morning, this after, see, it says morning here. Uh, this afternoon. How far up here is it? Then down Broadway, Broadway, Broadway. Let's see here. We'll mute him. Sorry. Okay. Are you muted? Yeah. All right. The presentation for today by Mr. Bill Mater covers a field day preparations and operations. Please ensure everyone's microphone is muted. And thank you very much, Bill, for taking time out of your day today to bring us this information that's very timely. Well, I'm happy to do that. If you will allow me to share my screen, I will endeavor to share my screen. Uh, I, I'm right in the middle of the West Virginia QSO party. I've been practicing for making contacts with West Virginia. And I talk like this when I do it on phone. I don't know how to do it on CW. There it is. Let's see. Okay. That should be the share. Let me get that so I can see what I'm doing. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to point out a couple of things before I go into this. Uh, there was some fake news brought up today. I want to point out, I have not won a radio since 2019 at the Dayton contest dinner when I won an IC7610. And the next day, to mobile uh, system fusion rig. So it's been a long, long two years with no winning any radios. And I want to be sure everybody understands that field day in uh, the mountain time zone begins at noon on Saturday. So the event, not a contest, I'll get into that later, starts at noon. I will be in uh, Lubbock, Texas for field day, and I'll talk a little bit about that. The entire event runs for 36 hours, or pardon me, 24, 30 hours, but nobody's on after the first 24. So it's a waste of time. Don't bother trying it. So. Here we are, field day. I want to start with sort of a case study. I'm a, I'm a data guy. Uh, by that, I mean numbers matter and how things work and, and previous experiences. I think we all kind of go like that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what we did in 2018 for the ADXA and a little bit in, I think, 2019 whenever it was uh, Judy and I went up to the Hemes Mountains. So in 2018, here's a picture of 2018 operation. Uh, you could see we had a, had a canopy set up and you can't tell, but there was a screen around it to keep the bugs out. And that uh, uh, like Pareto, if you know what Pareto, 80% of your problems come from 20% of your customers. Well, we kept 80% of the bugs out, so it worked well. And here's a, a perfect example of why having two people, especially when you have someone inexperienced sitting at a radio, and I'll talk about how you actually do that. Here's a guy who sat in front of a radio for an hour, didn't make any contacts because he was on the wrong side band. Now, how that happened, I don't know. So anyway, let's take a look at, at what we've did. This is from my presentation ahead of the 2018 field day for the uh, Albuquerque DX Association. These are the goals we had in mind. Uh, the big thing is to have fun. Now, there, you get a lot more out of it than just having fun, but having fun is really the key. And of course, our focus in our bylaws is on contesting and DXing. So we'll talk about field day in a contest. It's not a contest, but I'll explain why it sounds sure sounds like a contest duck to me. And of course, the camaraderie, that's the cool thing. Uh, David and Ken apparently couldn't get up early this morning like I did because I was long gone before they, 
those late guys even showed up at the at the uh, tailgate this morning. But hey, down there having camaraderie, talking to people, shaking hands. Good to see everybody for a change. And of course, Elmering helping new and inexperienced hams. And if you had enough stations, if you had two or more stations, someone who isn't active on the air could actually operate a go-to station, even though they've been licensed for 20 years. And then of course, contest trading for people interested in contesting. Field day is a, a much more of a low key event than many contests and it makes great training for those interested in contesting. And then one of the things hams do is set up a, in a contingency in case there's an emergency and field day is designed for that. That's what it's about. And then Haynes Park, wow, great place to introduce the public to ham radio. So if you want some bonus points, be sure to have a table out there talking about field day and ham radio. So concepts, in our case, the number of transmitters was based on the number of operators. I could handle three uh, for this event. We could have easily have handled three radios at the same time. In fact, we had two, but it takes enough operators to operate them. And the criterion was three operators per transmitter. So you'll see what we did in a little bit. And we put up what's called a rocket launcher. It looks like a rocket launcher, a mast, an AB-577 with a Cushcraft uh, A4, four elements, really three elements on 15 and 20 beam, Yagi on top of that. And we used the rope that was attached to the beam to rotate it. But what was cool, pun intended, was the air conditioned trailer. I had been working with the State Emergency Operating Center was up there for the uh, fire that it, whose name escapes me from 2016 and even done some testing up there. And that looked like a cool place. Well, an interesting place to go. It was not cool. It was hot out there as we finished setting up in the uh, late morning. We had a, uh, uh, we could operate because I had a, an antenna switch, bandpass filters and triplexer three radios on one antenna on three different bands. And of course, a gener generator with a uh, battery backup, not that we needed that. So the results, six people showed up. This is us setting up the Yagi antenna on top of the rocket launcher. We put it up to about 40 feet. And this is a picture of the inside. This was rough duty. There's Bob in 5 EPA who was working VHF six meters. And of course, six meters uh, doesn't count. A VHF station doesn't count against your transmitter count. And then I'm sitting there operating CW, which is all I operated for the whole event. And I don't know what Ken was doing down there, KG5 IDN, but I'm sure it was something important. Uh, we ended up, we had this radio set up for whatever anybody wanted to do. This was a K3 and a K3 down there. Uh, anybody wanted to operate, use your personal calls, uh, play, have fun, enjoy it. We ended up, we entered the emergency operating center category and we came in number one in 32 entries. So sometimes you pick low hanging fruit and that was low hanging fruit. There weren't a lot of entries and number one. So that worked out cool. And of course, for you guys, you're going to Hain Park which is not easy to get for an event like this. And as David mentioned, you, you can't stay overnight. So we always go to a place where we can stay overnight. It's not a contest, right? So these are the topics I'm gonna to cover here this morning. Uh, yeah, see David, you got me going this afternoon. I just got up from a nap. I was up early today and showed up early to the uh, tailgate. So not a contest, really? Here's a screenshot from the results from last year when I went to Lubbock and operated uh, with Terry at his station, Kilo Sierra 5 Zulu. So this is listed in the contest database at the ARRL website. Sure sound like a contest. This, 
the listings are in score order. Now, th these are contacts, and this is score. So you could see the types of contacts you make matters. Twice as many points for CW contacts. And of course, bonus points too. So that's a big deal. So you can have competition between clubs and even within a club if you uh, do separate operating. And since we're still in COVID-19, stations at home, Delta class D, get to operate and work other class D stations again this year, like they did last year. So there's a lot more contacts to be made. So it sure sounds like a contest to me. So at W5UR, which is the Albuquerque DX Association call sign, it's all about the rate, how many contacts you can make. That's what we did. What you do is what you do, what suits you and what works well for you. And so I would say, that's why you do this, to have fun, fun, fun till you, oh, no, that's a song, Beach Boys, no. Anyway, have a lot of fun. It's a great learning opportunity. You get to practice operating and technical skills. And anytime you do that, you become a better operator, a more competent operator. So, uh, 26 years in the Air Force, one of our core values was excellence in all we do. And I think that applies everywhere for everyone. So do it well, have fun doing it, and you get better at it. And of course, you're ready for a contingency should you have to deploy somewhere in an emergency. In competition, I'm not saying I'm competitive. I don't want you to get that misimpression, but hey, I'm a, I drive a race car, so you go ahead. You decide if I really am. And why isn't this? There it goes. Okay, a little slow. So here's the picture from the AWR website last year. This was the theme of VW bus. Don't ask me why. On a COVID-19 mask, which I thought was funny. Here's a way to do it. This is a picture from 20. When was that? 2005 when the 146.5A group went up to the east side of the Sandias, up the road toward the crest, and did their thing. What was their thing? It's all about the brats. Brats and brochen. If you've been to Germany, you know what brochen is. Brochen means little bread in German. So that's what you put the brats in. And that's what the guys focused on. And on occasion, one of the guys would make a contact. So there you go. But with COVID-19, obviously making operating from home, if you have an HF station there is much easier. You get to test your own station and you can have intra-club within the club competition if you want. And the cool thing is you get to aggregate your club scores. So each of the, of the club members who operates from wherever and submits a log gets to aggregate the total club score. And so it's always, I think, interesting to see that competition. Now, to me, the way I think about field day is I come up with that strategy that you saw earlier, or we came up, it was a club thing. How are we gonna do it? Where are we gonna go? The first thing you have to do is decide your category. And well, I guess before that you have to download the rules or view them online so you understand what the categories are. And the first thing breakdown is how many transmitters do you operate? One or two, like Terry and I did two last year. How many people will participate? If it's one or two people, you're in B or Bravo. If you're three or more, it's a group and it's called Alpha. So one transmitter or group of three would be one alpha. So here's the breakdown. Class D or class A is portable, three or more people. Class D is a home station. You can have multiple operators there and actually as many transmitters as you want at the same time. 
You could have multiple transmitters going on at the same time. Where Terry and I will operate this year, again, is E, the home station on emergency power. So we'll have a Honda generator running outside, just like we did last year with a backup, just in case, you never know. External fuel tank. So we only had to fuel it one time and we'll be running 100 watts, 150 watts or less, which doubles our points. Now, you could run QRP like Ed. Ed could go out there and you can see the ratio. You get two and a half times as many points, two in the five, if you run QRP. Uh, if you've paid any attention to HF propagation lately, I think that's only for masochists who, for whatever reason, think that, oh, I'll just run QRP and call CQ a lot and not make nearly as many of the contacts as one can running 100 watts. And then, of course, 1,500 watts, a multiplier of one, but you can't do that from home or, uh, yeah, E, at home on a generator. Not many generators, not many, some do, provide 240 volts. So pick how you're going to operate, how many transmitters, how many people, and where you're going to do it. And that kind of funnels you into a particular choice. And you'll see what those choices mean later. Then you got to think about, well, antennas. Antenna is the key to field day, having a good antenna. And an article long ago in QST, I can't remember, decades ago, pointed out a TP dipole. In essence, what it is, is a vertical mast with a dipole from the top going down for 20 meters and not perpendicular to that, 40 meters. So you've got two dipoles on the most productive HF bands, 40 and 20. And you can make contacts on other bands, but you're not gonna make a lot. 40 and 20 is where to concentrate your efforts. And the only reason to go to other bands is if A, they're open and B, you've run out of fresh meat. There's nobody else to work on 20 and 40 meters. The dipoles guide the top of the mast. You get them up as high as possible, 30 to 40 feet, and you can make literally thousands of contacts, thousands. And then wear a headset. Uh, I'm always amazed at field day stations where operators are holding a microphone in one hand. I don't know how they're typing. Usually they're writing down. And then they're trying to hear the audio from the speaker with the typical hams in the background going like this. Wear a headset. You can share a headset with someone you're Elmering or have an external speaker for them to hear what you're saying. They can hear that from your voice directly and what the stations you're working are saying. And here's the key, make a list of what to bring. I have a number of friends who don't do this and often go on a soda, summits on the air, parks on the air, field day, and make few, if any, contacts because they didn't bring everything. From the ADXA, we have the big list and we identify who's bringing what and why. And I've already got a list started for what I'm gonna bring to Lubbock again. Even though I'm going to a friend's station, it's already set up, but not for two radios at the same time. That gets a lot more complicated. So more on the strategy and your approach. The operator should be focused on the computer. You can't see it, but my fingers are on the home keys and I'm looking at my primary monitor right now where the, the logging computer screen is showing up there. And that's where I focus everything. I can change bands. I can change frequencies just by typing and modes, just by typing them into the logging, the logger. And I have a foot switch for the rare times that I do sideband. And I am ready. I'm focused. I'm going to show you in a minute how not to do it. Uh, and then protect you 
the operators and the rigs from the sun. If you're out doing this thing at Haynes Park, you want to have shade uh, to keep people from burning up in the, in the hot, hot weather we're having, unusually hot this June, and plenty of hydration. And by the way, there are a lot of IC 73s out, 7300s out there. That's great if you're going to bring one. Don't bring two and expect to operate them at the same time. They will interfere with each other. They have a large amount of what's called phase noise. And you can have one on 40 and one on 20 meters. And I know this because John KL2 X-ray lives just 300 feet away from where we live. And I hear his radio a lot. So two IC7300s been very, very bad to many. Chico Escuela. Thank you, Chico. So here's how you don't do it. Uh, it looks like they're in an RV. That's a plus. They're inside. They're out of the sun. They're out of the bugs. They're keeping cool. Maybe, maybe they got an air conditioner running if they need it. But look what's going on. One guy <clears throat> has a microphone in one hand, and he's typing with the other hand. So that slows his typing rate down by about a factor of 10 or more. Somebody else is writing them down. I don't know why. No headsets. See that? And the kid standing there watching the old, well, one old fart and one not quite as old fart. Oh, and look at this. An open soda container on the table with the radio and the computer. Not if KATE is around. This is not how you do it. I don't know if I've got a picture of how to do it right, but this is not the way to do it. But it's the most typical and the reasons why it's easy to win field day. Not that way. Here's another. What's wrong with this picture? Nobody's wearing a hard hat. Nobody. Stuff gets up above your head, you need a hard hat on. Nobody's got any gloves. And it reminds me, of when I was stationed at RAF Alconbury in the United Kingdom, not far from where John Major's home was, uh, we called the people who provided civil engineering, kept the buildings working and all of that, emergency generators, PSA. And those of us from the United States thought PSA meant people standing around, not getting much done. They have a plan. So here's our plan. What, this is what we did for last year. 2E, two radios, emergency power at a home station, low power. We made 1,675 contacts. We had a plan. I made 1,463 of them on CW. I didn't even notice I was sitting in a hard metal chair until it was over. Folding chair. I can't believe my butt put up with that. Almost 7,200 points. Number four, number four out of 1,762 entries across the US and Canada. We did well. We're, I think we're gonna do even better this year because we got a grandkid coming to help when Terry has to go to bed, plus the filters uh, to keep one radio out of the other. The K3 did fine, but the 7610 couldn't handle nearby RF. And then, of course, I'll do CW again, I hope. That's my plan. We'll see. So here's an example where just Judy and I, in 2019, went into the Hemes Mountains. We brought the RV up. I convinced, the, not the Lone Ranger, but Ranger, Bar Ranger Barbie, that we could set up at a place where someone had removed the no camping side. And I had the big banner, ADXA, emergency communications on the side of the trailer. So we got a lot of points from that. Operated out of the RV trailer with a K3 and the Honda generator and a fan dipole at 40 feet and a 57 foot uh, end fed wire, not end fed half wave. No, no, no. Don't do a half wave. No, no, no. Make it a random wire, but actually pick particular lengths that work out well, started at 10 feet, went up another 30 feet, and then it went out 37 feet. And here's the interesting thing. 
either one outplayed the other at times. So having two antennas is of huge benefit. There were times where I could work stations on the end fed wire I couldn't hear on the dipole and vice versa. Although generally the fan dipole worked better of the two most of the time. Now, what happened? I took seven and a half hours off at night from 1.30 on because I got too cold and I was just too tired to dig out the heater. I didn't have it set up in the trailer. So I went to bed. So we ended up number two out of 38 in 1B2, one transmitter, two people, because Judy helped me set up. There's the two, uh, two persons and missed it by 85 points. So I should have made it, but I was weak and gave up early and went to bed for a while and then sat there for half an hour having breakfast, pancakes and sausage. It was wonderful. St. Judy. That's what everybody calls her when it comes to field day. So here's the key to field day success, but in chair. You gotta be in the chair, fingers on the home keys, ready to operate and be prepared ahead of time so that everything you need, got a water jug at the appropriate time, a coffee mug, a Starbucks mug full of lozenges. If you're doing sideband, your voice will get tired. Think about what you might need and have it ready. Yes, FT8 or FT4, you can make contacts you couldn't make with sideband or even CW, but at a much slower rate. I average for the entire 24 hour period, 60 contacts per hour. Now there were times on all CW, there were times when that rate went down in the middle of the night where the old people were sleeping like I should have been and didn't. But you can't do that. And, and there were times I was making over a hundred contacts an hour. You can't do that on FT8. But if you're using a short and shiny antenna, that's for David's benefit, short and shiny, that doesn't get out well, FT8 may be the only way you're being heard. Uh, KC2 LM is a digital guy. He likes to operate PSK and RIDI, but there's hardly anybody on to work. So if you want to make contacts beyond CWs, the fastest way to make them and sideband next. And of course, people who aren't really experienced uh, contest operators. Remember, this is not a contest in spite of all the things that says it's a contest. Sideband is the way to go. Inexperienced new operators, sideband is the way to go. Now, here's how you make a contact. First of all, never stay on sideband, please copy. I've got, I've got the badge on here, you can't see it. So I put it in the presentation. Don't ever say, please copy because that's what they're gonna do anyway. Here's what you say and only what you say. If you call me, I, I go CQ Field Day, Kilo 8 Tango Echo Field Day. If you call me, let's say NM5HD, you go November Mike 5 Hotel Delta. So you set it phonetically, unlike 99% of ops on repeaters today, who often have ambiguous call signs with Fs and Ns and Ms and Ss. Give it phonetically. I will type it as you say it. You say November, I type N. You say Mike, I type M. You say five, I type five. And Hotel Delta. So what I respond on sideband is November Mike five hotel delta and your fingers are on the keyboard and you're already to echo whiskey tango x-ray what does all that mean echo is e my classification to echo two transmitters whiskey tango x-ray west texas section i'd like to point out that unlike many contests 
there is no multiplier for sections. If you make all your contacts in one section, that's the same if you worked all of the sections. It doesn't matter. So why loggers like uh, N3FJP have a thing, a screen for the section is beyond me. It doesn't matter. So I've sent and you've typed. Uh, you've got my call sign already because you entered it before you called me. You type NM5, uh, pardon me, 2 Echo Whiskey Tango X ray. By the way, I say your call phonetically so that you can let me know if I got it wrong. Maybe I didn't hear it right. So that's why I say it phonetically. You respond, let's say, one alpha, that means one transmitter, a group of three or more, November Mike for New Mexico. And then all I say is, and actually I just hit an enter key and it says it automatically, thanks, Kilo 8 Tango Echo. And that way someone listening knows I'm ready for their call and they'll go whiskey one alpha whiskey or whatever. Now, yes, I rant about rate, 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 but you need to speak at reasonable rates, reasonable rates. Don't be like the Italians or a lot of the Central and South Americans who speak so quickly. I have no idea what they're saying. They've got an accent. They're speaking at 200 miles an hour. I don't know what they're saying. Move on to the next contact. So how do you do logging? Of course, it's on a computer because it's 2021. Look at your watch. I don't have one. It doesn't tell me on these clocks, but my computer says it's 2021, so I know it is. The PC is old now, just like we are. Uh, Scott N3FJP has a field day logger. You can buy it for $8.99. He'll send you a code. And you guys already have it for the club station. It's cheap. Buy the whole package. His logs are very easy to use, understand, while they aren't as powerful as this one, N1MM. All I care for field day is I'm looking here, N1MM uh, entry window. I've got a couple others that are helpful with something called a call history. When I type in W1AW, it will tell me that they're in Connecticut. Ooh, that's cool, as if I didn't know that already, because I've been there. But either of these will do well. This is what contesters use, because it's very powerful and provides lots of helpful information. But what you're focused on and should be is the entry window. And you can see the entry window in the N3FJP logger, field day logger, takes up a tiny portion and gives you lots of information that's useless. Now, there's a little bit more to the strategy. In field day, there are bonus points. And here's an example of how we plan for the 2018 field day at the New Mexico uh, what is it? Homeland Emergency Operating Center, Department of Homeland Security. 100% emergency power for every transmitter, you get 100 points. Media publicity, post something on Facebook, send something to the newspaper, have a TV station report on it. As long as you have sent the information, you got the 100 points. By the way, you have to give proof of this so you put it in an email, you send them a copy of the email. Public location, like Haynes Park, 100 points. Let's see, divided by two, CW24, that's worth 25 contacts right there, just by operating in a public location. Public information table, another 25 contacts or 100 points. And then send me a message in a rl radiogram format don't know what it is google it take you right there you'll see the format send it in that format and you'll get a hundred points i don't know why maybe that message didn't get sent no it did because i actually sent it to my predecessor ed 
who was about to turn it over to me in the fall, I think. Okay, message handling. I have a question. Can... Yes, go ahead. Uh, if you look on Bernalillo County's webpage, that's November Mike Bravo Charlie Alpha Romeo Echo Sierra dot org Oscar Romeo Gulf. I have a PowerPoint slide presentation and included in it shows you how to use the radiogram and what you need to put in it to send the message to you and also to develop messages to others for that message handling point. I do have one other question regarding media publicity. In the past, I always thought that there were, and the way I read the rules this year, there were two different um, opportunities. One was a press release that went to the media, the radio stations, TV stations. And the second one was a posting on Facebook. Now you seem to loop, uh, put them into one category. Is that the same or was I just misreading it? Those are two different categories. Okay. In, in 2018, the Facebook thing was not available, but now you can do Facebook and then to the media of some sort. So you get 200 points. And following on that point, what constitutes a Facebook page? Is it a club page? Is it your personal page? Is it a, a site that's more publicly accessed like uh, New Mexico True? The answer to that is yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Yep, they Great. all count. You're welcome. You're welcome, Ed. So this is where you can get a lot of points. And it really, in most cases, it should be easy to get a thousand points. And in a lot of cases, I've seen people make more bonus points than they did contact points. So think about that. If you're interested in getting a high score for your club. So in summary, it's not a contest. It just sounds like a contest. It quacks like a contest. It walks like a contest. And so I need to get a shirt, a make a field day shirt that says not a contest. Right. Yeah. And remember, don't say please copy. So if you're an Elmer for somebody, remind them not to say please copy. I got this badge, please copy badge from a friend of mine, Elf Echo 6, uh, Juliet Victor, Bill, who lives part time in New Hampshire and the other time in California out at the International DX Convention. He worked a contest with Jim, Kilo 9, Yankee Charlie. And those of you who know who Jim, he's an audio guy and he does a lot on ferrite use and things like that. Uh, Jim said, no, no, please copy, don't do that. So why do you do this? To have fun. It is so much fun. And I think uh, the more people you do this with, the more fun it becomes. That doesn't take away from doing it with a friend at home or just a couple people like Judy and I did. Uh, I probably had more fun than she did in, in the mountains, but she enjoys going out in the RV and the outdoors. And she loves taking care of me and I need a lot of taking care of. So it's about fun. You choose whether you want to go to the field or not uh, and have your own criteria. My criteria are not your criteria. You make that decision. Where do I want to operate? You could, you could do both. You could go out with a club for a while and operate and come home with one caveat. The club station cannot make contacts with your station. So keep that in mind. Uh, and then develop a strategy. What am I going to do? Anything you're going to do well, figure it out, plan it ahead. The seven P's of planning, prior proper planning prevents piss poor performance, will help you. You'll do it better and you'll have more fun. Going back to why do we do this? Having fun. Practice good operating techniques. Remember, we've got the uh, W6H. Uh, Route 66 on the air, and the W6H will be from New Mexico. We'll have a bunch of operators, but they do it all across the whole Route 66. 
there are, I think, 24 is the total number of stations. Work them. Get ready for that. And almost every weekend, this weekend, I should be on the West Virginia QSO party, but there aren't many people in West Virginia, especially ones I can hear right now. Uh, state QSO parties, tons of fun. What a hoot. And of course, we have ours the uh, second weekend, second Saturday of April. It's over this year, it's coming up next year. And then logging. Use the computer to log. Get skilled at that. If you don't know how to do it today, download the program and you'll be ready next weekend on Saturday at noon to use that. You won't be very fast, but it's a new skill you will develop and be thankful for doing that. And don't forget bonus points. Get all the bonus points you can get. We get bonus points operating at Terry's house. Now we can't set up a public table because nobody drives down the short street on which he lives, but we're on emergency power. There's 200 points, points right there. So, and we may even operate the satellite. He's got a satellite station. So maybe we'll do that. So, oh, and I'm gonna make this available for the website. I've got a whole bunch of references here that you can see. Don't copy them down. They'll be available to you. So I'm gonna close this, make sure I close the right thing. And go back. Screen sharing is ended, yep. No longer screen sharing. Here I am, back where I can see your lovely faces. Well, Joanne is there anyway, then you, you ugly guys. Uh, who's got a question? I work for Radio Shack, I've got answers, nine years. Starting when there were only nine stores. Back in the twenties. I have a I have a yeah. comment. Bill, I have a comment regarding satellites. The International Space Station, I believe, will be operating the FM voice repeater. And that puppy is really easy to work. Uh, you can do that uh, maybe even with an HD, certainly with a vertical and some kind of external antenna. Yep, definitely possible. And uh, starting on the 21st through the 26th, uh, they'll be transmitting uh, slow scan TV images uh, continuously. So I think there's eight or nine different pictures. And um, if you have any questions on how to do that or track it, it's on the uh, High Desert's webpage on how to do slow scan TV images. So there's a PowerPoint presentation on that. Those, those uh, receiving those pictures will not count for field day. No, that's right. Well, they run from it's cool. the 21st, from, but it's just, it's just fun to do. And if you send me your, the pictures that you copy, I'll post them on the High Desert's website. Very good. So how many of you are going out for field day? Raise your hands. Even if that means operating from home. All right. Joanna, can you go to Haynes Park for a while? You're muted. Still muted. I can see your lips moving. I don't know if you're telling the truth or not, but I can't hear anything. Nope, okay, I think the answer is no. I encourage you, even if you come out to watch, watch someone experienced operate, it's a real learning lesson and it's a hoot. David and uh, Ken showed up here one day to watch me operate some event. I don't remember what it was. Now it's more than an hour ago, so who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Plus I've been down, up and down the hallway several times since then. So that that's like the Bermuda Triangle. It sucks anything out of my head that I need to know and it's gone, so. Well, I hope that you understand the prime focus for me, and I think should be for everybody, is to have fun at field day. It's a hoot. Now, this year, it's also going to be hot if you're outside. So plan and figure on that how you're going to keep people cool. That's a big deal, especially those who are, say, 
you got anybody over 20. <laughs> They're going you're going to have to keep them cool. That includes an awful lot of people. <laughs> there aren't many under 20. In fact, I think Terry's granddaughter this year is over t this particular granddaughter is over 20. She and her cousin came out with the ADXA back in Oh, I don't remember. 2017, 2015, not 2016 because of the fire. Uh, we went up to the State Emergency Operating Center. Those two made, uh, op operated the GOTA station because they were New Hams and they didn't have a radio, so they couldn't operate from home. And between the two of them, they made almost more context than we were allowed to count for GOTA, for bonus points. In GOTA, you can have up to a thousand contacts. We had something like 1,200. We had two or three other adults, but the kids made more contacts than all the adults combined. And they made more contacts than some of the experienced, op where's my hand went away? Oh, wrong hand, yeah. Than the experienced operators. So it's quite amazing. And kids are very competitive. That's what game. That's why gaming is so successful in that age group because they like to compete with each other. So get people out, unlike me, who like to compete. I don't like to compete. No. Nope. Why are you smiling, Jim? <laughs> not, he's not going to say. Mr. Okay. Mater, I certainly yes, do sir. appreciate you taking the time to share all this valuable information with us. And uh, like you said, the more the merrier. Uh, back in San Diego, used to go to their field day events, and there would be a hundred people there, uh, operating six stations. I mean, it was just a huge, huge thing. I was, I was uh, young and dumb, if you can believe that. The dumb part. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so I truly did not appreciate everything that was going on. Mm -mm. I do now. <laughs> So yeah, the more the merrier. Oh, it was it was just great times, great times. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, I think that's uh, that's about it for now. Does anyone have any other parting comments other than thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bill Mater? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bill. That was very informative. I appreciate you giving us to it, and uh, thank you very much. Very welcome, Bill. It looks like Rich. Has something to say. No, I was just applauding. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. Oh, okay. And the hand You're I saw. I saw the hand. Okay. You're welcome, Rich. I saw you down there this morning. Oh, did you? You saw the ugly mug? Yep. <laughs> nice. I didn't I took, see. Did you walk by where we were? Or? Yeah. Yeah. I took a picture for the post office. <laughs> oh, well, that's great. Now the FBI is going to be looking for me again. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Appreciate you. You're welcome. So I'm going to say this, and people will say, you can't say that. It's field day. Good luck in the contest. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good luck in the contest. You not a contest. Right. Yeah, not a contest. Oh. No. All right, we friends. Came... Well, uh, stay it, tuned. There'll be uh, other stuff coming out. Did you have something more, Bill? Yeah, I was going to say, in 2012, the ADXA came in fourth overall. Oh, wow. Overall, there were only four groups that made more con or three groups that made more contacts than we did. And we're talking people with six, 10, 12. You're only allowed to have uh, uh, 20 stations now, no more than 20. And believe it or not, there are people like W3 Alpha Oscar uh, with Frank W3 LPL in that group over in Maryland who operate with that many transmitters. They do a lot of VHF, UHF, and above stuff too. But they have two stations on every HF band. Oh, wow. Two stations on every HF band, except 160. Nobody does 160 in the summer for field day because all you get to talk to is a static crash, the thunderstorm. So why bother? Thanks, right, guys. Friends. Thanks, guys, been, and Gail. Uh, it's been very fun, and uh, 
Again, thanks to Bill and thanks to you all for sharing with us today your most valuable asset, and that is your time. And I certainly do appreciate it. And we will be in touch. Have a great day. 7-3. Yep, 7-3.